Hey everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Ray's Reviews. Just a few days ago, Crypto.com announced that they would be getting rid of the free Spotify and Netflix reimbursement. That's right, existing Ruby Steel Crypto.com holders who previously enjoyed a merchant rebate in Crow for Spotify will no longer get it. And Jade Green and Royal Indigo holders who previously enjoyed a monthly merchant rebate in Crow for Spotify and Netflix will no longer get it. The only good news is that you'll get an additional six months to enjoy these benefits if you activated the card before July 23rd of this year until January 23rd of next year. And if you're brand new to crypto.com and just stayed for one of these cards, or if you're upgrading to a card to the next tier, you do get to enjoy these benefits for the first six months of your stay. Now I know everyone is probably pretty upset about this news and probably everyone wants to know how I feel about this. But my first reaction to all of this is just, this doesn't affect me, bro. This doesn't affect me, bro. Just kidding. I'm not trying to flex. I mean, I don't even have a diamond on my neck. Celsius already left me wrecked. Just like this random girl last night who sent me a text. All right. All jokes aside, let's dig deep and analyze exactly what this means and whether I am worried or not. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I was really attracted to crypto.com and all of its benefits starting from early 2021 because compared to all other crypto debit card offerings out there and even traditional credit card offerings, some of the stuff that crypto.com was offering was absolutely insane. And it was just pure marketing genius because they were just doing things that no other credit card company or crypto company was doing so crypto or not but with that said how do these cards now look for someone that is coming into crypto for the very first time especially with all the other changes that crypto.com has done in just the last couple of months so let's first start off with the midnight blue card and this was the ultimate entry level card back in 2021 because at that time it was a free card and it offered a one percent crow cashback reimbursement Today, it's still a free card, but today it offers no Crow cashback reimbursement. It's still good for people who just want like a crypto debit card or the option to upgrade in the future, but I can't imagine most mainstream people would be too interested in this offering. So let's start off with the Ruby Red Steel card, and this card now offers 1% Crow cashback, but it's capped at $25 US monthly Crow reimbursement or a max spend of about $2,500 per month where you'll get rewards. For a $400 stake in the past, it absolutely made sense if you were a Spotify holder as the free Spotify alone would have paid itself off in just three years with an average cost of about $14 per month for Spotify. In just three years time, the card would have paid for itself. But today you only get a six months of free Spotify benefit or about an $84 value benefit. Now let's talk about the Jade Green card. And this card now offers 2% Crow cashback, but it's capped at $50 US monthly Crow reimbursement, which means again, there's a $2,500 per month cap where you're gonna get rewards. Now for a cost of $4,000 of stake Crow, in the past, at least you were getting free Netflix and Spotify or about $28 value per month. But now today, unfortunately, those two benefits are reduced to just six months each. You of course still get the free lounge benefit for one person and the 4% staking rewards if you keep an active stake on your Drake Green card. Now, obviously the icy white and above tiers weren't really affected by the most recent change just announced, but obviously the card rebate rewards on the icy white and obsidian card, uh, those rates did drop in terms of the Crow cashback on a monthly basis as well. Just a couple of months ago, icy white is now at 3% instead of 5%. So let's kind of go over the positives and negatives about this situation. And before we ask how there could be any positives from this situation at all, the number one thing I would probably say is long-term sustainability. This seems to be another move that crypto.com is making in terms of long-term sustainability. Now, Crow is a cap token supply around 30 billion, which means it's a finite supply just like BNB. So theoretically, you cannot afford to pay out these reimbursements in the form of Crow rewards forever. And keep in mind that the only reason we want these Crow rewards, which we get in terms of a monthly reimbursement, is that hypothetically, we're really looking forward to either an increase in value of Crow or increased future utility of Crow, or worst case scenario, it's like air miles. And in this bear market, while there are some people that might sell off their Crow on a monthly basis after getting their reimbursement, I would reckon that most people probably hold on to their Crow for the long term, looking for brighter days to come. 
Now, back in May, we found out that Crypto.com crossed 50 million users. The more interesting data personally for myself will be how many of those 50 million users have an active stake and a card because not every user will actually get a card or have an active stake. Some people may just sign up to use the exchange for Shiba Inu. Now, I really don't know the exact breakdown of how many users have staked for a card or not, but let's be conservative and say 2% have as a hypothetical number. So 2% of Crypto.com's 50 million users have at least a ruby red steel card share or above. Again, hypothetical number, but this brings us to 0.02 times 50 million equals 1 million. So let's say there's 1 million users that are getting a Spotify reimbursement of about $12.99 or $13.99 per month. So at today's price, which always fluctuates, that would be roughly 100 crow, which is the amount of crow that I received in my last Spotify reimbursement. And that is just for one user, which is myself. Like hypothetically, if there are 1 million Ruby Red Steel card holders or above, each getting 100 crow every month, then you are paying out 100 million crow every month. And if you do the math, the numbers just don't make sense at all if you have a cap supply of 30 billion, because this model basically can't go on forever. If everyone just kind of holds on to their crow, then either the value of crow must go up or you have to reduce the amount of crow rewards being paid out or crypto.com needs to limit rewards or get rid of them altogether. And I think most people are just really holding on to their crypto right now. They're not really buying or selling. They're just kind of holding and hoping for things to get better over the next couple of years. Let's talk about the cons and let me put it this way. CeFi has a lot of work to kind of sort of rebuild trust after the entire Celsius and Voyager digital disaster. Because right now everyone is hearing stories of like people putting their money into crypto and losing it all. And the number one question that a lot of the mainstream population who has not even entered crypto is asking is really this. Do I even want to be in crypto? Is crypto just a big scam? Is it like a Ponzi scam? And unfortunately, this just hurts all C5 platforms, including crypto.com. Now, we all know that after the reduced Crow cashback rebate rewards a couple of months ago, crypto.com's debit cards were just not as competitive with traditional credit cards anymore. And let's just say, for example, someone that is entering into crypto for the very first time today. And let's just say, for example, that someone is entering into crypto for the very first time today and deciding whether they want to have a crypto.com debit card or not. Now, most people in the past would have considered either the Jade Green card or Ruby Red card in the past as the beginner cards or these starter cards. Well, now with the Jade Green, which requires a $4,000 crow stake, but only getting you a 4% staking rewards and a 2% crow cashback that is limited to $50 per month, and you have the Spotify and Netflix reimbursements disappearing after six months, it's much harder to sell this card versus something like the Wells Fargo Active Cash card, which has 2% unlimited cashback. Or how about the Ruby Steel debit card, which now only offers 1% crow cashback and no Spotify after six months? Well. For something like this, again, it's much harder to sell this to someone versus something like the Chase Freedom Unlimited Credit Card that gives you 1.5% unlimited cash back. The honest answer is that the Crypto.com debit cards are a much harder sell to the mainstream population right now compared to say early 2021 when there was still a bull market intact and everyone was having fun. But with that said, is there simply no more utility with the Crypto.com debit cards? I would definitely not say so. I think the biggest advantage is, and still is, it is one of the easiest and most convenient options to turn crypto into fiat VIA, the Visa card. And you may not think about this beyond your own country, but in a lot of countries around the world, this is extremely difficult to do. And keep in mind that crypto.com is a global company. Now, I did take a look at some of the encouraging stats from the 2021 Consumer Spending Insights from Crypto.com. And in 2021, Crypto.com did see double digit increase of spending per user compared to 2020. So this means that people are using their Crypto.com debit cards more in 2021 versus like 2020. Of course, this was during the peak of a bull market run. So we'll have to see how that kind of plays out in 2022 in next year's report because you can't really compare bull market versus bear market, but it'll be interesting statistics. Now, the honest truth is this, 
CeFi needs to fix itself to kind of drive the next wave of mainstream adoption. Like even my regular friends who are not in crypto have heard of the Luna collapse and the bankruptcy of Celsius and Voyager Digital. And no surprise, trust in crypto is at an all time low. But it's not just crypto that is down, like everything is down. Even mainstream companies like Shopify recently announced that they laid off 10% of their workforce. Like we are in a global recession. So what crypto.com is doing right now, in my opinion, is trying to be conservative and survive for the next bull market run. Like what is exciting is that they captured 50 million of the 350 million global crypto users today. So they have really positioned themselves well. And if they can keep building during this bear market and survive until that next big wave of mainstream crypto adoption, when it comes again, exciting times could be coming again. Like possibly they will increase the benefits and earn rates once again in that next bull market run. So it'll be really exciting to kind of really see what comes next. But that is enough of me talking. This is only my perspective. What do you guys think of the recent changes that Crypto.com did to eliminate the Spotify and Netflix rebates after just six months? Is it gonna drive you away from the platform or are you gonna continue to hodl strong in Crow and Crypto.com? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as with anything and everything, please do your own due diligence and research. Don't trust anyone, including myself, unless you've done proper due diligence for yourself. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.